This is Drum Kid, the aleatoric drum machine that I've been working on for the past two years and which is now available to buy. In this video I'm going to take you through the basics of how to use Drum Kid and give a demonstration of its features. You're watching Nerd on the Wire. to insert some batteries, so just unscrew the six thumb screws on the back of the unit, which you can do by hand, and insert three AA batteries, either rechargeable or regular. Then replace the back plate and tighten the screws. I've obviously sped up the video here. Turn on the power using the switch on the top, and you should see the LEDs flash a random pattern to show that drum kit is working. Alternatively, there's a USB mini power input on the side if you prefer to power the unit that way. Plug in a pair of headphones or a stereo aux cable and press the start button to hear your first beat. Now we're going to play with the first set of controls, which adjust how much randomness is added to the rhythm. I've set the chance control to zero, which means there's no chance of any extra hits being added. I've also set the range control to zero, so that all generated hits will be the same velocity, and the midpoint is 100%, so that when hits are generated, they'll be at full velocity. Now I'm gradually increasing the chance control which increases the likelihood of extra hits being added. Once that control reaches 100%, you can hear that hits are added on every single subdivision of the beat. We can then alter the zoom parameter to adjust which subdivisions of the beat are affected, giving us control over how hectic the rhythm feels. The range and midpoint controls can be adjusted to give us more variation in velocity. If we reduce midpoint below halfway, drum kit will start to remove hits from the underlying beats rather than adding them. Now I'm just adjusting the controls to give us a fairly standard beat with a bit of randomness so we can explore the other sets of controls. You can change to another set of controls by pressing one of the buttons, A, B, C or D. The first control in set B is pitch, which changes the speed at which the samples are played back. If you go below halfway, the samples will be reversed. Next is the bit crush control, which gives a glitchy digital distortion effect as you reduce it to zero. The third control is crop, which cuts off some of the sample to create a staccato effect, and can also create some fun glitchy noises if you change it quickly while a beat is playing. The fourth parameter is drop, which controls which channels are audible and which are muted. Turning the knob to the left gives you more trebly sounds like hi-hat, snare and click. Turning it right gives you more bassy sounds like kick and tom. And leaving the control in the middle leaves all the channels active. Button C gives us control over Drum Kid's built-in drone. The first knob adjusts the volume of the drone. You can either turn it left for a single note or right to add a fifth muted in the centre. The next knob multiplies the drum signal with the drone signal to create a tuned, modulated sound. Again, left is for a single note, right adds a fifth, and no effect is heard in the centre. The next two knobs change the pitch of the drone. You can use the tuning control to set the bass pitch, and then the last knob selects individual semitones. When turning this knob, the LEDs help you identify the note you're about to select, and the note changes on the first beat of the bar, allowing you to play rudimentary chord sequences. Mm. 
Finally, button D gives you control over the underlying rhythm. The first knob allows you to select from 24 different preset rhythms, while the second knob changes the time signature. You can choose from 4, 5, 6 or 7 beats in a bar. The third knob controls the swing feel of the rhythm. There are three settings, straight timing, half shuffle and full shuffle. The final knob controls the tempo. You can also set the tempo by tapping the tap tempo button repeatedly, which is useful if you're playing with a band. Once you've created a rhythm you like, you can save it to DrumKid's memory. Press the C and D buttons simultaneously, then press any of the six buttons to save your beat in that slot. When you first turn DrumKid on, a default beat is loaded. To load a beat that you've saved, press the A and B buttons simultaneously then press the button you use to save the beat. When I was designing DrumKid, I thought it would go against the spirit of the project to include presets that I programmed myself, so instead I decided to include randomly generated beats, which will be unique and different for each drum kit. Any slots that you haven't used for your own beats will contain randomly generated beats, so try loading a few of them. There are 36 memory slots in total, divided into 6 banks of 6. To change to a different memory bank, press the B and C buttons simultaneously, then press any of the buttons to choose that bank. You can then load or save beats in the normal way. DrumKid has MIDI input and output ports, which you can use to either receive or transmit MIDI clock data, as well as sending note data. Here I'm connecting a MIDI cable from my computer to DrumKid's MIDI input, so that I can synchronise DrumKid with a track in Cubase. You can still adjust all of the controls as normal, with the exception of tempo. Now I'm connecting DrumKid's MIDI output to my computer's MIDI input, allowing me to control a software drum machine in Cubase. Again, all of the controls can be used as normal.
drum kit has been designed as a customizable, hackable instrument, meaning you can upload your own custom firmware. First you'll need to change the hidden switch from MIDI to Arduino, then connect a USB mini cable to link drum kit to your computer. Using the free Arduino software, you can then upload any code you want. Here I'm uploading a simple program called Blink, which is included with the Arduino software. Once it's been uploaded, one of DrumKid's LEDs will flash on and off. Once you're done playing with custom code, you can always re-upload the original DrumKid firmware, which is available to download on GitHub. This is a much more complex program, so it takes a bit longer to upload. I've sped the video up here, but it should take about 25 seconds. Once it's done, you should see DrumKid's LEDs flash. Finally, if you're into electronics, DrumKid's hardware is also designed to be customizable and hackable. You can remove the back plate to gain access to the electronics inside. It's a pretty simple design, based around an Arduino Nano compatible microcontroller, which you can see here. To enable people to add their own features, like extra buttons, knobs or LEDs, I've added breakout pins on either side of the microcontroller headers. You can either solder additional headers here, or just solder wires directly into the holes. I'm planning to do a dedicated video showing various features you can add to DrumKid, hopefully including Eurorack compatibility. That's pretty much it for this video. If you want more information, or if you'd like to buy a drum kit, you can go to my website, mattbradshawdesign.com, and you can also just drop me a question in the comments. Thanks for watching.